Hello team, how's it going? Welcome to Combat Ready HQ. Welcome to today's newest video. This combat vehicle shocked the world, insane power of the CV-90. As always, check out the original video in the description. Go and give them a like, a share, a subscribe. And if you could always like, share and subscribe to Combat Ready HQ, really helps push the channel. The community is growing, nearly 100,000 subscribers. Discord is growing. Go and check out the free Discord in the description below. Check us out on Instagram. Grab your coffee, check out our Combat Ready Coffee on our website as well. But CV90 is sort of like the British variants to like the Warriors and the CVRTs, but now sort of the Ajax family. Infantry fighting vehicles can help a wide range and sort of trades within the army. So you've got sort of infantry guys where you can have eight men in the back. Um, they've got sort of a forward controller, sort of like fire support teams like the FSTs in the UK do with the Warrior. Um, so it'd be really interesting to learn a little bit more about the CV90. So as always, comment below what your thoughts are, but let's get into today's video. The CV90 is a highly versatile Swedish infantry fighting vehicle designed to tackle the harsh Scandinavian landscape. It has spawned a family of IFVs, the most recent of which has been used to help Ukrainian efforts in defending their country. For almost 30 years now, it's been the jewel in Sweden's military crown, and there's no sign of this IFV going anywhere soon. In fact, it's likely we'll see the next iteration of the vehicle in the next few years. Let's take a look at this Swedish fighting machine. During the Cold War in the early 80s, the Swedish Army needed vehicles with high mobility, air defense, anti-tank capability, high survivability, and protection. In 1985, the Stridsfurden 90 was a project group that was made up of representatives from the Swedish Armed Forces, the Swedish Defense Administration, or FMV, and Swedish contractors that included Haglunds and Bofors. These contractors would be behind the CV-90 build and future iterations. Haglunds would become part of BAE Systems. In the project group's search for an IFV, they finalized the design for a new vehicle that came from an Air Force concept. A year later, the prototypes were ordered. Five prototypes were constructed and were delivered in 1988. These were then tested extensively between 1988 and 1991. At this time, further prototypes for specialized variants were ordered. The first deliveries to enter service started in 1994. Since then. So that's some time ago, isn't it? If you think about it, 1994, you're talking 30 years ago this was introduced. And at the beginning they said, you know, they can't see it slowing down. There's so many people that have commented on my videos when I've done a video on the Swedish military and said, what about the CV-90? It is a vehicle that the Swedish military really, really love. And like I said, it's been in 30 years now. Insane. Then, the original CV-90 has gone through many iterations, and the core of the vehicle is often customized to meet the needs of specific missions. Let's look at the latest iteration that's currently in service, the CV-90 Mark IV. That's the Mark IV nice. came from a research and development program performed by BAE Systems to use feedback from the seven countries. Upgrade to the new Google Pixel 8. Pixel's durable design. So they used so the CV90. Uh, Switzerland, this iteration French, has many new improvements Brazil. on its predecessor in terms of mobility, protection, and firepower. The newest vehicle was launched by BAE Systems during the International Armored Vehicles Conference and Exhibition in September 2017. So what we got there, we got the turret. Obviously, I can think it can carry anywhere from like a 35, 40 mil, 50 mil cannon. It's got a 762 secondary armament there. You've got a smoke um, for your smoke screen in here. Here's your sights. You've got your commanders and gunners sights. And that looks like some sort of air defense attachment, which is pretty cool. Um, driver would be down here with these three periscopes, um, preferably I'm guessing you can go hatch up or hatch down, um, but hatch down would be more preferred. Um, tow bars at the front and then your standard tracks. It's not massive, it could get across most terrain, but I reckon they have the same issues that we did in the CVRT. Any sort of massive sort of dips, um, holes, then you really do have to slow down, unlike a sort of like a main battle tank or the new Ajax. The design of the CV-90 Mark IV is very similar to the original model, with the driver seated in the front left, the power pack to his right, the turret in the center, and the troops location at the rear of the hull ready for deployment. The construction is of all welded steel armor. 
This basic armor can stop attacks against 14.5 mm armor piercing rounds. That's good. The armor protection over the frontal arc is classified, but all models from CV90 and later are said to be protected against 30 mm armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot ammo. No way, so this could take a 30 mil armor piercing sabot round. Um, we used to use them on CVRT. Uh, that's pretty impressive is it, if this could take a direct hit from that. This CV90 has a crew of three. This includes the same as the CVRT and the Warriors. Gunner. The rear part of the hull, which is home to troops being delivered, can accommodate up to eight infantrymen. These are seated with four on each side facing each other with an anti-blast seat for each soldier. These troops enter and leave with a large hydraulic ramp in the rear of the hull. For further protection, the Mark IV can be equipped with an active protection system. The state-of-the-art sensor suite of this APS provides a long-range, real-time, 360-degree panoramic view of the vehicle's nice. vicinity which gives the vehicle the capability to react and counterattack quickly. So what you got to think in the back there, we'll just go back to that before we move on too far. So those infantry guys are in the back. I haven't done it as infantry, but I have been in the back of a warrior uh, as an FST and I've had to dismount. So you're in the back there, you've got your headset on, it's pretty loud, rumbling around, but you've got no situational awareness. You might have a little window at the back, but you're relying on what the commander of the vehicle is telling you. And they have to, those infantry guys have to then dismount, speak to Ryan, um, listen to Brian Wood. They have to dismount out the back and go into en some sort of enemy fire, but they don't really know what's going on, apart from what the commander has told them. Um, so it's pretty scary stuff if you're sort of, uh, sort of mechanised infantry like this. Uh, even when the FSTs, I remember just being in the back and they're like, Craig, right, we need you to dismount. We need to go and provide fire support uh, on foot in a close building. So you've got to get out and you don't really know what's going on. You've got to get, get, get your map out, get to ground, figure out where you are, and then sort of build your situation awareness up really quick. Um, all you're in, you're just in there, it's rumbling around, ear deaths on, and it can be pretty, pretty loud. Threats are detected thanks to the use of an active electronically scanned array radar sensor developed by Rada Electronic Industries and a passive infrared detector developed by Elbitz Elisra, if required. When a target is close, an explosive projectile interceptor is launched towards it. The interceptor explodes very closely to this threat, destroying or deflecting and destabilizing it without detonating its warhead. This is mega. This interceptor is a mortar shell-like projectile with a combustible blast warhead that sends a shockwave upon detonation, enough to neutralize the incoming aggressor. In this That's version of the CV-90, modern protection systems of the vehicle also include a jammer system to stop infrared missiles and laser detector devices. To power the 37-ton tank, the CV has that stopped the initial engine. impact. It's an improvement on previous designs, with the Mark IV capable of up to 1,000 horsepower from its engine, and the latest upgraded X300 heavy-duty transmission. From top of my head, it's the way the same as a CVRT variant. Has seven dual rubber-tired road wheels on each side. More wheels. Drive sprocket at the front and an idler at the rear with no track return rollers. A track tension adjusting system is fitted as standard on the CV90 which lets the driver adjust both tracks at once without the need to move. If needed, the IFV can be equipped with SUSE type rubber band tracks. These are lighter and quieter while also providing greater range, reducing vibrations and increasing protection against fire and mine blasts. They haven't brought these in in the UK, but I've tested, I know they've been looking at rubber tracks. Uh, apparently, like I said, like they said, they are quieter and they last a lot longer, so you don't need to change the tracks as much because changing tracks can be right ball ache. In terms of weaponry, the Mark IV can be fitted with a two-man turret or an unmanned weapon station. No way. The power-operated turret is of all welded steel construction and designed for two men with the commander seated on the left and the gunner on the right. Turret traverse and weapon elevation are all electric with manual controls That's available good. in the event of an emergency. The D-Series modular turret with the vehicle is highly versatile and can be switched out with different types of armament, from 30 to 40 millimeter and 35 to 50 millimeter automatic cannons up to a 120 millimeter smooth bore tank cannon. The secondary weaponry can include Spike LR or other anti-tank guided missile launchers, as well as a 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine gun. This gun is mounted to an independent pod located on the turret's left side. Put a spring in your step with Flusnet's full fiber, a reward winning broadband. This weapon pod can also be armed with 40mm automatic grenade launcher, 
7.62 mm machine gun, or laser weapon, depending on the needs of the mission. The right side of the turret features two anti-tank missile launchers stored under armor and raised from inside of the turret to fire. See how for their air defense, but anti-tank anti missile launchers are amazing. Or other spy or reconnaissance devices. There are also eight smoke grenade dischargers mounted under armor on each side at the front of the turret. Standard equipment of the vehicle includes a nuclear, biological, and chemical filtration system with yeah. a chemical detector and radiation detector systems. For stealth, it can also use heat-absorbing filters to provide temporary protection against thermal imaging, image intensifiers, and infrared cameras. But while driving... The commander can use an independent sighting system mounted on the roof of the turret. This is a day camera, a thermal camera, and a laser rangefinder, which lets the user find targets and confirm threats to the gunner, who can take them out with a cannon or anti-tank missiles. The CV-90 is currently in service with Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Norway, and Switzerland, all using the IFV. By 2020, there were 16 different versions of the CV-90, all modified to deliver various roles. Over 1,000 vehicles have been built to date, and in 2023, it was announced that Sweden would contribute 50 of the vehicles to Ukraine. Oh, nice. However, it wasn't known which version was being sent. Now, the Swedish Army is looking to improve the CV-90 once more for the Mark V model. The work needed on this is estimated to take the next four years to complete. Although no agreement has been reached between the FMV and industry, there have been some development goals published. The first is for a hybrid electric propulsion system to be proposed and possibly integrated. Others include improvement of its heat, radar, and visual signature management, integration of beyond line of sight anti tank firing on the move there, pretty accurate. And integration of unmanned aerial vehicles. These improvement variants are thought to extend the lifetime of the CV-90 in the Swedish Army beyond 2034. What do you think about the CV-90? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I think that's pretty wicked. Um, have to say, like, yeah, it's definitely more of a similar variant to our Warriors. I would say because they've kept it in service and they want to keep it in service, it is more upgraded. Obviously, we've got the Ajax variants coming in, Ajax, the Ares, uh, and a few others, um, which are way more modernized, I would say, than the CVR-90, but it's a whole brand new vehicle that's built. The CV-90 is something that's been in service for a while and they've continuously upgraded it at the Mark IV now and they want to go to the Mark V. But some of this, absolutely brilliant. Uh, looks like it's pretty stabilized when firing on the move. You've got the two anti-tank um, rockets uh, on the side, which I think is brilliant. I thought they were actually air defense, but they're not. Um, I think that's a brilliant capability because with this CVI-90 infantry fighting vehicle, um, especially if you're going to do rec reconnaissance or you're going to be quite near or on the front line behind enemy lines engaging the enemy, and main battle tanks is going to be a massive threat. So having them as a capability is brilliant. I think that... I can't remember exactly what it was called, but the sort of infrared sort of RPG guider um, blocker where it sort of fires out the little mortar and then explode is amazing. What a capability that is. And to be have to be able to have that, you know, because if you're armoured, there's more like a chance that you're going to be going up against an armoured vehicle. Apparently this can stop a 30 mil um, arm and piercing sabre round anyway, which is, I think is a brilliant pit of armour. Um, to have that capability as well, to help prevent sort of RPGs or another armor fighting vehicle um, engaging you and destroying you is brilliant. Um, similar track, similar size to the Warrior from what I can see, similar weight by the looks of it, uh, be able to get it to cross the terrain as much. Same similar crew, a free crew, driver, gunner, commander. Um, so all that's very similar, similar sort of ar um, armament as well. Secondary is a 7.62, which is what they have. We've got the 30 mil, and um, this can have a 35, 40, or a 50 mil from what I've seen. Um, so slightly bigger gun. Uh, this can fire on the move pretty accurately as well from what I can see. And it's now automatic like the Ajax. I know they're looking to upgrade the Warrior. Um, but the majority of the Warrior and the CVRTs were manual. The new Ajax is all pretty much automatic now with a manual override. So very similar across that as well. Um, so I can see why the CVR knights, I can see why the Swedish and the other um, sort of forces have kept this in. I think this looked absolutely brilliant. Um, it looks pretty similar to sort of the British I IFVs. Uh, and all they're going to do is continuously upgrade the armor and the 
technology and science. As long as the outer does what it needs to do and you're able to continuously add pieces to it, upgrade the infrared, the sight systems, the laser, sort of range finder, the main armament, the munitions, then why not keep something that works? You know, don't don't get rid of something if it ain't broke. So yeah, really enjoyed this. I think it's a brilliant bit of kit um, that they should continue to use. And I can see why the Swedes love it so much. Um, but yeah, you've got to think when you're in the back of that as an infantryman, situational awareness just goes completely out the window. You're relying on the commander to give the old commander as much information to rely to the section before they then get out and engage the enemy. Um, but Given these to the Ukraines, we sold loads of CVRTs to the Ukraines. This is much better. Um, I would say this is personally, from what I can see, possibly better than the Warrior. Um, but like I said, the Warrior is going through a lot of upgrades at the minute and they're trying to do very similar to the CV90 with the rubber tracks, um, changing the turret, etc. So we'll have to see, you know, try and get some more information on that. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what your thoughts are and I'll see you soon.